We are back again with yet another installment of the People's Water Board Coalition's Water Wednesday's webcast. As always, I am here with my beloved co-host, Valerie Jean. Hi, everyone. Can't forget our behind-the-scenes tech person, Miss Angelica. She is simply marvelous. And today, people, we have a retired attorney and a very concerned citizen that is here to talk to us about the effects of potash in Michigan, Mr. Marco Menezes. Thank you so much for being here, sir. Hi, Marco. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. When uh, when I first learned about this here happening here in Michigan, I was so disturbed by it. So I'm really, really grateful that you're going to be here to talk to people about it because I don't think a lot of people know. Um, and it's a short show, so I'm going to jump right in. Can you tell us, wait, and we're going to start from the basics so that people understand exactly what we're talking about. What is potash and why is it bad for Michigan in the water? Okay. Potash is a chemical compound. It's, uh, it's basically a type of salt used uh, in industry for primarily for glass making. Uh, and uh, in, in agriculture, uh, much more in agriculture uh, as a fertilizer. It's used like with uh, corn and soybean crops. Uh, there are two uh, main types. There's muriate of potash, which is uh, KCl, and potassium sulfate, which is K2SO4. The muriate of potash is what is proposed to be mined uh, in Osceola and uh, surrounding counties here. Uh, all of those uh, compounds of salt, however, are mingled together uh, at a, a depth of about 8,000 feet below the surface, along with all other kinds of salt, including uh, sodium chloride, table salt, that we're all familiar with. Wow. Uh, why is it bad for Michigan? Um, yes. Uh, I... Uh, you know, off the top of my head, I would reframe that question. I would say it's not necessarily bad for Michigan, uh, provided that it's pro that the, the a project like this would be properly cited and properly regulated. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, unfortunately, this one is very badly cited because it's located on the edge of probably one of the largest wetlands in Osceola County, directly oh. within 200 feet up gradient, meaning any kind of spill or accident, uh, almost caustic, hot salt brines would spill right down into this marsh. Uh, killing everything along. Oh, wow. there are Additionally, there are all the people in this area within, I call it a sacrifice zone, because essentially that's what we're set up to be, rely on uh, fresh drinking water from their water wells. And there's an extensive network of mining and disposal injection wells planted in this area. You're all familiar probably with fracking technology. It's very similar to that. Indeed. Uh, and uh, so the possibility of un leaks underground contaminating freshwater sources and leaks above ground contaminating surface water uh, are, are acute, uh, oh, particularly geez. in this area that is riddled with streams, wetlands, seeps. It's just a very, very bad place to do a major industrial activity such as this. Yeah. Well, how many, how many um, wells are there or mines are there? Well, the, currently they, they have permits for eight. Uh, eight uh, mining wells and three um, uh, three uh, di disposal wells. The way the process works is they pump hot water uh, under pressure underground, eight thousand feet into these salt formations where there's where the salt is solid. The 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 water uh, hot water dissolves the salt. They pump it back up to the surface in solution. They pump it to their refinery where the potash and the table salt is is uh, separated. The um, the potash is then further refined into their product, uh, dried out and, and bagged. Uh, the, the table salt, there's a little market for table salt in Michigan or in the Midwest generally because the market is glutted. So that the, because there's no, uh, no market for it, it has to be disposed of. And so they have to put it back into solution and pump that salt down into the Dundee Formation, which is 3,000 feet below ground, uh, to oh, dispose geez, of it. So that, that is the primary usage of water that they're going to be taking. All that water. Huge amounts of it done. Huge amounts. The, the, it's all fresh water that will be drawn from our water tables. It'll be contaminated with salt And you uh, can't put it back mines. into the water table after it's that. Gone. That's, that's it's the gone. same thing as fracking then at that point. Yeah. Same kind mm -hmm. of situation. They right. end up injecting it back into the well, and then it contaminates everything around it. Exactly. Um, oh, is there geez, any way... To do this where it would be more amicable for our our communities in, in environment well they yeah. say that um well, first of all you got to look at the regulatory structure michigan's regulatory structure uh is uh, is um deficient um we've been uh, we trended downhill for 40 years since the england, england administration gutted all our mm. environmental regulations the deq now eagle has become more an arm of facilitating yeah. industrial development and protecting against it. Uh, I don't see so, it helping. 
like at all thinking about communities yeah. on don't, any we don't. level. We don't. And, and that hasn't mm-hmm. changed. Even with no. uh, the new Democrats in power, that has not changed. That outlook is still the same. Their job is basically to, to uh, silence opposition and to Rubber push industry co- corporations. Through. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Rubber stamp them. It's just it's so, so wrong that it, it, every time we talk about Eagle, it's like this, you know, you're supposed to be in <laughs> You it's know, protecting the environment, protecting communities. Us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it seemed like issue after issue after issue when it comes to water, they they fail us just ridiculously. It makes you wonder yeah, if on they the drink issue water. of water policy. No, I think they yeah. drink they drink scotch. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. On a, another issue of water policy generally is the way the way regulatory and statutory process allow huge uh, uh, withdrawals of water uh, for free. You know, uh, an industry is capable of taking as, almost as much water as they want. The thir- yeah. This one is, is permitted for 13, 1,350 gallons per per hour. Oh, uh, my gosh. Co- consumption. And that, what that, um, or, or maybe that's gallons per minute. I'd have to look at uh, GPM. Gallons I per hour. I bet it's per minute. Per minute, yeah. Uh, I bet so it is. So when you do the math, that is... That is like 60 million gallons of water a year or, or something like that. And it's, it, uh, I did the math a while back. It's more water. It's five times the amount of water that Nestle and Blue Triton are drawing. It is uh, two mm. and, and a they, half. They, they draw enough water to close up aquifers and they're they never do. able to use ever again. They yeah. do. It's, Just it's, for some contrast there. I don't know if you've heard about the uh, the uh, battery plant that's proposed for the Big Rapids area, oh, the ocean no, plant yes, there. Yes, it's it's two and a half times as much water as that plant will use, and both of those uses are not consumptive, meaning that they re- can recirculate their water back into the hydraulic system. The the potash use is consumptive; the water is gone. Yeah, it's just and, gone. And that's enough water uh, also, t- in another perspective, to provide all of the basic water needs for twenty thousand people a year. And people are sitting without water. Exactly. They're just, I mean, and and they're being overcharged for water. Right now we're working on water affordability bills being pushed through the Michigan legislature. They can't use because it's still contaminated. This water this water's being given away essentially for the price of a permit by the state. But if we don't pay for our water bill, we're getting shut off. Like that's you know, that's the corporations get they 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 know they walk around with they can do whatever they want, mm-hmm. especially yeah. with an environmental protection agency like what we have here in Michigan, right? Like they can just walk around and do whatever they want. They know they get the rubber stamp every single time. Well, it's not it's just the environmental protection agency in Michigan. I mean, this is a trickle down effect sure. because I believe we have the right laws at the federal standard. The cities and the communities and the states will be forced to follow the federal law. But, yeah, I, I wish that I wish that that were so. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we have reg- regulatory uh, compliance issues with our uh, e- EPA too. Uh, mm-hmm. In that, uh, uh, you know, they they have they have a culture also have a culture of uh, furthering development over over uh, environmental protection. Yeah, absolutely. Um, could you tell us a little bit? about the proposed permits sure uh the uh the company has applied for, essentially for uh two two different types of permits uh, they have currently have three disposal wells permitted those are the wells that they're going to flush the you know, brine solutions back down uh 3000 feet into the ground to dispose of the their excess unmarketable salt that they will have those wells they did some testing and they found that the uh, disposal area that had been permitted was insufficiently permeable to allow the volumes and pressures that they wish to achieve in their process. And so they, uh, they are applying to have the injection zone extend a f- another thousand feet up closer to the surface into the Dundee formation which is a limestone formation known to be very, very porous. Unfortunately, the Dundee has been in this area over the years for oil and gas exploration many times. So it's like Swiss cheese perforated by, by um, oh my old, well, old well bores, many of which may be conduits to, to allow that uh, the, the hot brines and 
uh, disposal materials under pressure to uh, to leak back up into the surface. The, the way these, uh, uh, the EPA and EGLE evaluate whether or not this is safe is simply to check the records uh, to make uh, to see whether there's a paper record attesting that that well, well was properly plugged. There is no actual mechanical integrity testing done. So if a wildcat oil and gas driller 50 years ago put it punched a hole into the ground, uh, poured a few bags of cement in it, and wrote a piece of paper saying that it was properly plugged, filed that with the, with the DNR in those days. That's as far as their inquiry goes. Uh, and uh, it, it, so that, that, that's the risk we're taking when, yeah. we, when, we, when we rely simply on paper records. Mm -hmm. Wow. You're talking about drying up aquifers. You're talking about mm -hmm. putting like water that can't be put back into the water table back into the earth, which is going to leak into aquifers. I mean, this is bad all the way around. I mean, let's just yeah. be honest, it's bordering on genocide because without fresh water, so many different groups of 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 life forms will be destroyed. From the yes. plant life to uh, the fish life to the human life. It'll be catastrophic. They like to tell us. They like it the company does that um that um that um salt brine is not toxic. Well, it's not it's not toxic legally, meaning it's not classified legally as a toxic substance. But if you take concentrated salt brine and pour it on your yard, I guarantee it's going to kill everything it touches. So it's yes. toxic enough uh, yeah. to be of concern. Um, Absolutely. Uh, the other three, those that's this one one of their permit requests. Uh, additionally, they're asking for three more disposal wells than the three they already have permitted. And uh, we find that puzzling because even if they were ready to build the refinery, uh, it would take them two two to four years to complete it. So they are years away from mining anything. They already have permits for three disposal wells, and now they're seeking three more years before they can ever use them. And uh, we find that puzzling. Yeah. Yeah, they're setting themselves up so they can just take over the whole area and and do whatever Pretty they much. want. With Perhaps, or may, or maybe they're maybe they're looking at an alternative to potash mining, something else that they might be able to do if they have disposal wells permitted. I'm I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, Th that that's a paranoia be on my part. So yeah, and definitely. Yeah. Well, no, definitely. I mean, it's warranted, right? They do stuff like that all the time. It happens. Yeah. So yes. you, you have to think the worst because that's often what happens. It <laughs> Absolutely. is. It is. And since you're the one who's going to be dealing without having water, affordable or like having actual um, clean water, you know, it's just devastating for whole communities, yeah. for that whole community. And the thing is, is it, what does it look like to fight back, right? Like... Have have you been organizing um, yeah. as a community together? The uh, the community's torn. There are people in the area who have been persuaded that they're going to become wealthy as a result of this. Oh, the wow. company has, has promised them riches through royalties. In wow. fact, we were told, I was told early on that... Uh, uh, when I asked the uh, CEO of the company, he, he spoke at a local gathering. I asked him, well, you know, that's all well and good, but what about us? How, what You're going to wreck our lifestyles. Right. Uh, we, we become accustomed to living in a certain way out here in the country. We enjoy the rural lifestyle, and now you're mm -hmm. going to come in and industrialize it. How am I going to be compensated? Well, you'll get royalties. Mm. And th they'll probably get out of that later, too. Well, they will. I mean, we yeah. had a potash. We had a prior potash uh, development out here 40 years ago that was put in by um, initially by PPG Industries. It changed hands several times after that. It's PPG. still out here, a mile away from where I live. Um, but it's um, it's currently owned by Cargill, and they only mine table salt out of that. Uh, and uh, yeah. they they made those same promises 40 years ago. And and what happened is that the company only mined under the property that it owned. Uh, and it it owned the mineral leases for, so they never paid any royalties to anybody. Wow! Uh, and it was a it's a it, it's tiny, uh, in in scope compared to what uh, not having these clean water. Are, <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's tiny, but it's tiny compared to what these people are proposing. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, I mean, scale. how much money do you offer somebody when you're poisoning their water, or drying right, up their you, aquifer? Yeah. Right. You leave them with the we'll with uh, no Google option that. other than to move away. Yeah, we yeah, have to Google how much that is worth. You know, I'm sure <laughs> you the know, corporations that's, no, you don't, have because put a there's price no price for. It. There yeah, I mean, you can ask anybody in, like, in any place like that's covered in PFAS, right? Those communities that are completely inundated by corporations just, in PFAS, right? Just they go to any have, space where they don't have access they, to they clean water, and they any will amount, tell there's you there's no not amount of money you could pay you can them. Put on that. Yeah. yeah, there's no amount of money you could pay them. You have to have clean water to live. 
<laughs> so that's there's no amount of money and those corporations certainly aren't going to pay what that water is worth to people's lives yes. and how important it is to the environment and all of those things. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's the the permits, I think, in a, in a nutshell. There are uh, there was a public hearing on Thursday last week. I, I couldn't make it, um, but I do plan on filing my um, comments in writing uh, with the EPA. They will be accepted up until midnight tonight, uh, Monday okay. at midnight. Okay, so we're going to have to follow up uh, with our listeners and find out exactly what happened. Are there other action um, items that people can take? Is there some other way for people to get involved? I know that they can go to the website and sign a petition. We're going to have that petition um, linked to the show so that people can uh, sign it. But is there any other action items? I mean, of course, we want people to just learn about it, right? Cause I, sure. I do, I, I do a lot of work around water, and I had no idea about this, just none. Well, there, there, there are policy issues that that need to be uh, that need to be uh, looked at seriously and need to be reformed at the state level. Of course, the way you do that is through legislative action. So, and we there have been some promising um, turns of events as a the we need to vote out as many of the pro industry anti environment candidates as we can of whatever party they may associate it's so important to vote local those it like is. these local elections they are the these are the people deciding on whether you have clean water or not and, and yeah. we need to stress to those candidates that needed to, they need to take positions on michigan water policy particularly the withdrawal large water withdrawal policy yeah. the policies regulatory policies within eagle uh, about uh, enforcing the laws uh, that exist and beefing up uh, the laws in order to make uh, it easier to enforce cleanup against uh, uh, contaminate our water supplies, and also yeah. to to make it possible for for the the cost of environmental cleanup to be cons considered as part of the permitting process. For example, oh, to that... require people who are doing activities such as this to put the environment, the local environment, at great risk to submit environmental protection bonds that would, in, in the event of a spill yeah. um, or a, a serious damage to the environment, those bonds could be used to uh, pay for cleanup. Otherwise, companies can simply declare bankruptcy and, uh, mm -hmm. and the state is stuck time. with a tab. Yeah. It happens all the time. All so that, that's another uh, legislative solution because currently there's no process, legislative authority to do anything like that. Additionally, the legislators need to take a look at our economic development apparatus. Michigan gives too much money away to too many companies mm -hmm. uh, without any regard to how that money will affect the local communities other than economically. They assume that, that if we create a thousand jobs in this community, it's all going to be a good thing. They never look at the other impacts upon the air. What does that thousand jobs do to that community? How does it affect housing? How does it affect water? How does it affect the yeah. environment? How does it affect the quality of life. All of those things need to be taken account into that process. Absolutely. And, and the MEDC, Michigan Devi uh, Economic Development Corporation, and the um, uh, and, and it's a, they don't, they're not tasked with looking at anything. No. They rely upon Eagle to tell them whether or not something is okay. And we all we all know what happens uh, when you do that. Yeah. So, yeah. So that needs to be part of the process. We need to have we need to have people who are well versed in those types of issues, uh, community issues, environmental issues, as members of uh, of the Michigan Strategic Fund Board. The Michigan mm -hmm. Strategic Fund is currently comprised of <laughs> bureaucrats and uh, business people. We need of some uh, community people, and we need some environmentalists on that board. Agreed. That's another policy change that's required. It always makes a difference when you invite those people, impacted people, community people, when you invite them to the table to actually create Absolutely. the legislation. It makes such a difference in the legislation. Like sure. when you're actually it's, listening to the people that, that are going to be impacted by it or have been right. impacted by it. It's, it's always easy to pour some, uh, some you know, to visit some uh, something upon a community uh, when you don't have to live there. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And you're not, you, the stakes, you know, are high where the stakes aren't as high wherever you're at. Right. You're not going to pay attention to it. And that's um, no true statement because that applies in pretty much any situation across the board if you're not part of that community and don't have a vested interest in the community you don't care what happens to it yeah and certainly not the the people making these decisions they Absolutely. just don't they make decisions all the time uh, it shows that do you have any final thoughts just from on a personal level i could guess i could be accused of being a nimby 
uh, it's it, it, it whenever something like this is planned and i'm literally within a stone's throw of where all this is going to happen and we've lived mm -hmm. out here for for uh, almost 50 years affecting we, your whole life yeah and and we have built we started with a you know with a, a 20 acres of of, um, of bare ground pretty much and a hole in the ground that we that i dug and and built a house on and and uh and you know we've built it up we're really proud of what's what's we've accomplished here over the years uh, and um and now now uh, somebody uh, from colorado uh a company from colorado comes in they say they're going to transform my life you know they're going they're oh, going to wow. transform the county but yeah. they won't tell me what that transformation is going to look like mm -hmm. they they tell mm -hmm. me well we're going to give you royalties but they're not talking about the the whole area, 15,000 acres that they have leased being crisscrossed by pipelines above ground and truck traffic, five five trucks every three minutes because there's no rail access out here. So everything will be shipped in and out by trucks. Yeah. Uh, and this, Which this adds is all... to the environmental impact by a huge percent. Exactly. Yes. This is all happening in a very quiet rural environment. This is yeah. it's going to completely destroy. It's going to dominate and destroy the quality of life in this area. Uh, that is something that We'd like somebody to pay attention to. We'd Absolutely. like that. We'd like people to pay attention to that anytime there's a development in a rural community. Yeah. Think about how it's going to affect the people that live there. Find out whether or not they're going to like that. Let them know what they're in yeah. for. Don't just tell them you're going to give them royalties and we'll take care of you. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Let them know what it's going to look like in 20 years if they go through with their plans. Yeah. And then let them decide what they'd like to be. And the full impact, how it's a chain event, because when you think about it, when water becomes contaminated, soil and air shortly follows because water infiltrates all of that. So it would yeah, just true. destroy yeah, the entire so environmental connected. ecosystem. And if people are thinking, oh, you know, I live in the city or whatever, I don't have to worry about this. This Everything's connected. The way that these corporations treat all yeah. of us. They got their boots on our neck on a daily basis and on our lives. And our lives can be changed like that like that in an instance when they decide to move into a community and the community have should have some say on whether they get come get to come there or not i mean there's yeah. so many correlations right with marathon yeah. and 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 in this and all of these things like in southwest detroit they the yeah. people you know they they did a whole um community begging the marathon refinery to please buy their homes because it was they, they were getting so sick and it was years and years and years and years yeah. down the line before they started to actually do that but the community and one and that's really um it really what's going to have to happen it's going to take us all to be paying attention to this don't feel disconnected from it because you're totally connected right to yeah. it. all of us are totally connected to these issues in so many ways we see them across the board across the u.s and around the world so that's you know it's all the same thing um as far as that goes Thank you so much for being on the show, my Marco, pleasure. and for sharing um, sharing what's happening there and and how it's personally impacting you. Um, I'm hoping that we're going to have someone else come on and follow up and talk about what happened with all of the permits and the decisions that are going to happen literally in the next day or so. Um, we're going to put the website and the petition. We're going to connect it to the show so you all can just go down, blow the show, click it, and um, learn all that you can learn about this um, and try to protect your community because things like this happen to all of us. We got to really do a uh, come together. Thank you, Nicole, for always going on this journey with me. And to our listeners, you know, try to take care of each other. It's hard times um, and try to stay afloat. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.